Well, I get a lot of comments and questions. Alexander Dyer, my sewing machine quit running. What's wrong with it? Well, how the f I get this question a lot. In general, what are some things you can do to make your sewing machine sew when <laughs> when it's not. If you're sewing with the sewing machine, one of the things that you need to learn is how to operate your sewing machine so that you can make whatever it is you're making. So you're like, well, I want to learn to sew shirts. Half of that is learning to operate your machine. I'll try to give you some information to help that go a little more smooth for you. You want a manual. If you can get an instruction manual, that's going to be very helpful to you. You can find a lot of manuals for free on the internet. Just type in your sewing machine model number and manual and you'll find a bunch of them are out there. That's where I get most of mine. If you've got a machine that's new to you or you haven't used it in a long time, clean and lubricate your machine. There's a lot of good information on the internet about what solvents to use. I would just ask that you go and look that up. If nothing else, just use sewing machine oil. Use lots of sewing machine oil, put it on, wipe it off. If you have an air compressor with good dry air, blow all that lint and stuff out. By going through and giving it a thorough cleaning, you get rid of all the lint. You might find a broken needle tip somewhere, so it's good to get that out of there. You might find thread wrapped around certain parts, get all that out of there. Those oils can get gummy. They attract dirt, so by cleaning it, you get that dirt out of there. Everything's going to work better. Now, if you've got a machine that's new to you and you're cleaning it, you're going to be learning about that machine. You're going to be coming familiar with that machine where all the moving parts are and kind of what's going on. So for me, if I get a new machine, that's where I start. I clean it. I lubricate it. That helps me learn the machine and that helps the machine just uh, give it a chance to move buttery smooth. And when everything is nice and slick like that, when everything is moving real smoothly, if there is something that is maladjusted, I might be able to kind of hear it or feel it when I'm turning the hand wheel and I can find problems throughout the machine a little easier if everything that is correctly adjusted is also clean and well lubricated so that any sort of maladjustment might be more apparent. That's classic, set yourself up for success. Change your needle. By changing your needle, you're going to check and possibly correct a lot of things. If the needle's bent, you might not be able to see that it's bent. It might just be a little bit. A new needle's going to take care of that. Make sure you have the right needle. You might need to refer to your manual. I've had sewing machines that it was written right on the front of it. So right here, I've got three different needle systems. I chose three that have obvious length differences. If you don't put the right needle system in your machine, it's just not going to work. Not only does the needle need to be the right needle system, but it needs to be the right size for what kind of thread you're using. All right, now I've got three needles. These are all the same needle system, but they are three different sizes. Once you know that you've got the right system, you need to get the right size. And the right size depends on which thread you're going to use. Here's an 18, a 20, and a 24. So this 18 can handle TEX 69 thread. This 20 can handle the TEX 105. And this 24 can handle TEX 210. If your needle is not big enough for the thread that you have, that thread's going to drag through there. That's going to be bad for your thread and it's going to be bad for the formation of the stitch. Look down in the description. I'll have a link where they have made a chart and it shows the appropriate needle to thread size. If the needle is not seated correctly, so once you got the right needle, you want to insert that into the needle bar and you want the needle to go all the way up into the needle bar as far as it'll go right here in this window you can see when the needle moves up there. 
that is fully seated. So you wouldn't want to tighten this needle down if it weren't fully seated. In effect, you would make the needle too long and it's going to throw the timing of the machine out. This needle can be rotated 360 degrees. So you have to make sure that you orient the needle correctly. So right now, this is the scarf. And on this machine, that scarf needs to be towards the hook or the inside of the machine. Now this needle has the groove on the outside and the scarf is on the inside. So this is the way I want it and it's fully seated so I can tighten it down now. Once you get your new needle in there, when you go to run the thread in, in that needle, you need to make sure that the thread is going through the needle in the correct direction. You'll always go from the side with the groove towards the side with the scarf. You always thread a needle towards the hook so it'll go through like that. Under here the hook passes the needle very closely and you want that hook to pass the needle on the scarf side of the needle. So that scarf needs to be towards the hook and that can vary based on which machine you have. So if you know which side the hook passes the needle, you'll know which direction to insert the needle with the scarf facing the hook, and then you'll always know which way to thread the needle. Thread the needle towards the hook. So there's quite a few things that happen when you change your needle. And so any one of those things could be throwing your sewing machine off. And so just by changing your needle, you could fix your machine. If your machine is always sewn well and you get set up and it won't sew, you know, a lot of times you have rethreaded your machine and it pays to go back and check the thread path and make sure that you've got it threaded the way you intended to. Thread is a little bit fiddly and sometimes it'll get wrapped around a part that you don't need it to be wrapped around. So just kind of retrace the path all the way back to the spool on the thread tree. Here is a thread tree. You should line the thread guide directly over your spool. So what I'm going to do is I want to put this in a in an extreme position to illustrate what can happen if you don't have your thread coming directly above the spool. What happens is as the thread comes off it starts to come off at an angle and that would in effect increase the tension that the machine feels. Then it breaks over the top like that and then it's going to come off real easy on this side. So it'll be low tension and then oh, right through there that's high tension and low tension easy 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 high right and it's going to it's going to go back and forth. So this is going to make your thread tension constantly change and you're going to be chasing it all over the place. So make sure you got your your guide over your spool directly over your spool. Then it'll pull off at a consistent tension all the way around the spool. Thread tension. Thread tension is a big subject. I've got a pretty good video on that. Check it right here and then come back here. If your thread tension is off, it can make the machine perform as if there's something wrong with it. And in fact, it's just a thread tension issue. Make sure that your thread is good. Well, I've gotten a lot of thread over the years by purchasing machines. People will often throw in a box of thread with the machine. Uh, that's pretty exciting. You're like, wow, I got all this great thread. But a lot of that thread is old. In the long run, what has happened is I've thrown away more of that thread than I have kept. And what I learned was old thread, especially if it was left somewhere where the sun could shine on it, it just gets rotten and it gets through your machine and it breaks. The thread becomes weak and it starts to break. Well, you don't want that in your project anyway. You think something's wrong with your machine when actually it's just bad thread. So just like you want to have good thread, 
you want to have good parts. So a lot of times when I'm working on these machines, I have found that something's not working and so I'll get a new part and when I take the old part off, I find that it's a, a cheap aftermarket part. Cheap aftermarket parts don't work or they work just good enough to really piss you off. So on this machine, it wasn't sewing very well. I was trying to sew leather and it was just bunching it up. It was terrible. What I discovered was the aftermarket bobbin that was in the machine was causing me a lot of trouble. As I pull, it sticks and then it breaks free and then it sticks again and it breaks free. So what I like to do is, um, is just put a mark on here, just a line, and uh, I'm gonna pull on this and just, see it's, it's kinda stuck and then it breaks free and boom right there it's stuck again breaks free boom stuck 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 so this bobbin is out around the specs aren't right I don't know when you're dealing with industrial sewing machines my advice is you stick with OEM parts whenever you can now there are other manufacturers so you can get good premium aftermarket parts but if there's two parts available and one of them is one-tenth the price, you can bet that that one-tenth the price product is not worth that price. It is not worth whatever you spend on it is a waste of money. Use good parts and you'll have good performance. If you use cheap parts, you're going to have poor performance. And I feel like some people will say, Oh, that machine's a piece of junk. When actually, the machine's just fine, but it has some junk parts in it. And if any one part is junk, the whole thing is messed up. The old saying, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. A sewing machine is a chain of parts, and they all have to be hooked together. They all have to work in coordination. So if you got one weak link, you know, the whole thing's thrown off. That chain's going to break right that chain is weakened by that by that cheap part so let's pull out this cheap one and we'll put in the uh, original this threads actually a little larger but you can see this just spins out real nice nothing else has changed except for what bobbin is in the machine nice and smooth now this machine is back to sewing well Okay, so hopefully I gave you some useful information that you'll be able to get your sewing machine up and running again. Or at the very least, perhaps you'll be able to recognize when you need to get a sewing machine mechanic to take a look at your sewing machine. Thanks a lot for watching my video. Be sure and subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And if you'd like to support the channel, become a patron. Check out my Patreon link on my channel. There's a link in the description. Thank <laughs> you.